Do you think the authorities here are doing enough, Doctor? Good morning to you. Good morning. Yes, I do. Uh, you've actually had um, uh, up to a dozen cases identified uh, in people who've returned from different places earlier from the Diamond Princess and from uh, China. So they are very good at picking it up. Uh, and the advice also, if you've been in an area that where you know there's an ongoing outbreak, uh, it is a good idea to self-isolate, especially if you get any symptoms. And symptoms are difficult to identify. I mean, the first symptoms are exhaustion, really, and fever. So it's not an easy one to identify. Most people don't get the sniffles or anything like that. Um, and then you develop a dry cough. So it's not an easy one to identify. So the advice to self-isolate, if you are in any of those groups, is good advice. Let me ask you this. There seems to be two schools of thought, Doctor. Is it wise or is it pointless to wear a face mask? Uh, we don't recommend wearing a face mask unless you are coughing or sneezing a lot. And uh, coughing or sneezing, I'm talking about any respiratory infection. And people... so. People misunderstand the face mask. They think the face mask is about protecting themselves. It's actually about protecting others if you are producing a lot of respiratory uh, droplets, <laughs> to put it gently. <laughs> and uh, so essentially, and one of the risks with the face mask is people struggle to wear them for long. They're very uncomfortable mm -hmm. and they tend to touch them a lot. And if you touch the front of your face mask and it's wet, whatever respiratory bugs you've coughed out onto your face mask uh, will go into your hand and then you will put it onto other surfaces. So, no, we say yes, there's an appropriate time to wear a face mask, but, but generally, no, it's not necessary. Um, what would be your next greatest fear or what would be good news that perhaps we're starting to win or it's starting to recede? Okay, so the good news we have seen already is that China has shown you can do it. You can do it with good community engagement where everybody does listen to what the authorities ask of them, where they don't panic, they don't go running around sort of hiding symptoms, uh, where they listen to what they're asked to do and do it. It's extraordinary. When you think of the size of their outbreak, you know, nearly 80,000 people, but we've looked at the numbers and they've, they've prevented possibly up to a million cases by, by really saying, okay, now we have to be very serious. We have to lock down um, communities. Communities need to self-isolate. But they also made it possible by arranging deliveries, arranging online medical services, all sorts of other things. So it, it takes... A big community response, it takes the whole of the community, not just the government, not just the health authorities, absolutely everyone.